welcome back to the Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay series. In our first installments, we took a closer look at combat gameplay. Today, we're diving straight into the heart of Mass Effect Andromeda, exploration. In addition to beautiful story missions, Andromeda is filled with worlds to explore. No way to solve it. Our story is contained within the Helios Cluster, a portion of space populated with dozens of star systems. And the Tempest is where that exploration begins. You can navigate star systems using the Tempest's galaxy map. From planets to moons, to anomalies and starships, wherever you are in Helios, you'll now be able to see everything that exists outside the ship's main windows in real time. In Andromeda, there are over a hundred planets to discover, and a handful of beautifully crafted worlds can be landed on. And that's where the adventure really begins. Each world you visit has its own story, its own characters, and of course, its own challenges. Today, the world we're going to visit is called Elodin. Exploring the opening landing area called Paradise, you'll quickly discover that the heat on this planet can be deadly. Water is scarce, and mysterious ancient artifacts dot the landscape guarded by dangerous remnant creatures. Basically, to live here, you have to be desperate, or Krogan. But even the Krogan aren't happy, and they don't trust anyone from the initiative, least of all a Pathfinder. How you deal with the Krogan in these challenges will ultimately determine your success on Elodin. We need the Krogan, and the Krogan need us. Before you set out, you'll get an update from your AI pointing out key locations. The remnant monolith suggests this was indeed supposed to be a golden world. We're going to start the adventure by heading over to the Krogan colony, but the choice of where to go is ultimately yours. <laughs> Our all-terrain rover, the Nomad, is key to quickly covering the expansive landscapes throughout Andromeda. You can also enhance the Nomad with a series of functional upgrades designed to give you better turbo boost, higher jumps, better handling, and more. While you're exploring, one of the key objectives will be to discover locations to call down forward stations. Once found, each of these will act as a fast travel point and allow you to change your loadout or call the Nomad if it gets lost or destroyed. They also offer resupply and protection from any environmental hazards. Our conversations at the Krogan Colony point us in a few directions. Exiles are causing trouble at their base, the Flophouse, and a derelict remnant ship may have a drive core the Krogan are in desperate need of. Let's head to that ship and see what we can find. Out here, we are more exposed to the heat. In Andromeda, all of the planets have localized and or global hazards. The Pathfinder and the Nomad are both separately outfitted with life support systems that help protect against these hazards. But once you run out, you'll need to find a safe location or a forward station to recharge. I'm reading a normal temperature range, Pathfinder. As you travel throughout the world, you'll find new areas to explore, new characters, and new storylines. Ultimately, all of these discoveries will help raise the viability of the planet. Increasing planet viability does two things. Allow for the creation of an outpost and upgrade the Nexus, the Andromeda Initiative space station. Before a planet can support an outpost, you'll first need to get its viability to at least 40% by pacifying threats, allying yourself to locals, solving environmental problems, and accomplishing specific tasks related to that planet's story. For example, in the case of Elodin, your relationship with the Krogan will determine whether you can build here or not. Regardless of whether you build an outpost, your exploration and discoveries will also give you Andromeda viability points. Reaching thresholds will allow you to upgrade the Nexus and wake up more colonists from cryosleep. Who you decide to wake up will determine what perks and advantages you'll get. Will you wake up scientists to give you an edge in research and development? Military personnel to give you an edge in combat? Or merchants to give you a leg up when trading? But of course, not everything on these worlds will be so straightforward. Andromeda holds many mysteries, not the least of which is a vast network of ancient vaults. Simply figuring out how to access one of these vaults is a challenge in and of itself that can take you across an entire world. Once inside, you'll need to rely on skills from every element of Andromeda gameplay, including exploration, environmental navigation, puzzle solving, and combat to get them back online, and then make it out alive. Go! And resolving the mystery of these vaults may just hold the key to survival in Andromeda. This is unbelievable. At its heart, Mass Effect Andromeda is a game of discovery and exploration. The choices you make and the places you go let you blaze your own unique trail through Andromeda. Whether you're exploring the depths of a crashed starship or delving into the core of an active volcano, the more you engage with the world around you and the characters in it, the more that world will surprise you with what's waiting 
just around the corner. It's really gonna be something, isn't it? Welcome back to the Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay series. In this video, we will take a look at profiles, favorites, and your squad. As you level up in Mass Effect Andromeda, you'll gain access to dozens of skills and over 300 skill upgrades. You're free to pick any skill without being limited to a class, which allows you to create a Pathfinder that is totally suited to how you want to play. As we discovered last time, there are three main types of skills in the game. Combat, Tech, and Biotics. As you unlock skills over the course of the game, you'll also start gaining access to profiles. There are seven types. Let's take a look at two of them, the Adept and the Explorer. The Adept profile is perfect for players who want to specialize in biotics. As you choose more biotic skills, the Adept profile will give you bonuses to suit your playstyle. And as you can see, choosing Adept gives bonuses to duration and damage of your biotics. The more you invest in those skills, the higher level profiles you can unlock. Or maybe you want to be more versatile, choosing some combat mixed with biotic and tech skills. This will unlock the Explorer profile, giving you perks and buffs that enhance all your abilities. And of course, you can swap these profiles at any time, allowing you to keep the action fresh, giving you a number of ways to tackle every battle, and making sure you never feel locked into a particular style of play. This brings us to favorites. Favorites are a quick way to map three skills and a single profile to one slot. Any time during combat, you can switch between one of these four slots, giving you access to up to 12 of your favorite skills during the course of a single fight. Here's an example. In this battle, I've equipped a favorites loadout designed for long-range combat, utilizing cloak and a sniper rifle to suppress oncoming enemies. The sniper alone isn't enough, so I'll deploy an assault turret and toss some grenades before switching to my second favorites loadout. It's designed for close quarters combat. Loading these new abilities puts them in a cooldown by default, so I'll have to make do with my shotgun until they're ready. The Fiend is too powerful and I'm not in any position to take it out immediately, but my new favorites are ready. I'll make my getaway using Biotic Charge and then maneuver around this group of enemies. This favorites loadout is particularly combo friendly, so I'll engage by comboing Cryo Beam and Lance for an explosive result, then clean up with my shotgun. It looks like the Fiend has taken an interest. I'll do what I can from a distance before switching to my third favorites loadout. One that emphasizes ranged biotic abilities such as Backlash and Shockwave, as well as Flamethrower. Let's see if we can find a better vantage point and stall the Fiend's approach. Using Backlash, I can shield myself from oncoming fire and deflect it back at the enemy. This is particularly useful against large crowds of enemies. However, this horde is scattered, so I'll need to regroup. Looks like the Fiend has other plans. I'll stand my ground by using Shockwave and then follow that up with Flamethrower. The Fiend is hurt, but it's going to take more than that to defeat it. Switching to my final favorites loadout, I'll engage the Fiend with soldier-focused abilities. Let's finish it off with Flat Cannon and Trip Mines. And when it comes to combat, don't forget your squad. Each of your six squad mates has three active and two passive skills. In this case, Korra uses her biotics as a support character, and Drac is a bruiser who can soak up lots of damage. Not only can you set your squad up around the battlefield, ordering them to defend locations, attack targets, or rally to your side, but you can also team up with them for devastating power combos. Power combos activate when you or one of your squad mates primes an enemy or groups of enemies, setting them up for the kill. Then you or a squad mate jumps in to detonate and finish the job. And you can always level up your squad mates to make them specifically good at priming or detonating targets. We're explorers first, but it's a new galaxy. We need to be ready for any situation, including combat. I'm Liam Costa, security and response specialist for the Pathfinder team. Before we set out, you need some basic firearms and mobility training. The name of the game is Adaptability. Only so much cargo space on the arcs, so initiative weapons and armor, designed to be customized multiple times in the field. There's four main types of guns to work with. Pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. Pistols are your standard medium to short range weapon. Easy to aim and fire, and low recoil so you can shoot on the move. Lightweight, quick to reload. 
When you're ready to punch it up a little, Carnifex pistol with grenade launcher augmentation for the advanced user. Next, shotguns. Perfect for getting in close. Shotguns are simple. For large targets, grouping, or just some extra kick. They hit hard with a wide shot pattern. Like all our kits, they're highly adaptable. A personal favorite, katana with laser shells. For obvious reasons. Next up, assault rifles. High rate of fire for covering fast targets and making short work of shields. And if you watch your recoil, good at distance too. If you can see your mark, chances are you can hit it. Augmentation of choice, Avenger with electrical conduit. Last in the queue, sniper rifles, the heavy hitters. High powered, accurate, and long, long range. They'll take down almost anything while it's still a speck in your scope. Now, guns on everything. Close quarters training is a must. Do you have the finesse for an Asari biotic sword? Or the muscle for a Krogan hammer? Some of you have biotic implants or advanced Omni tool tech. Biotic abilities can shape the world. And if fighting is unavoidable, they'll be your go-to. Any object can be a projectile, even your target. Or just toss them into the air and give squad mates an easy shot. When you're manipulating combat at a gravitational level, almost anything is possible. Omni tools are tools, and they're just as useful for defense and offense. With tuning and training, they can be outfitted to freeze, burn, or electrify. And never underestimate a tried and true Omniblade. Options are key. I prefer a little of everything, but if you focus on certain skills, you can do amazing things. Biotic specialist, Adept is the pass for you. Feeling tactical? Sentinel is the way. Want to get in fast and shake things up? Vanguard. Have a look at each specialization and you'll get an idea of what they can do. What you can do. Last but not least, let's talk mobility. Fun mobility. Jump jets. Need the high ground? You've always got it handy. A quick dash will get you out of an attack path. Like everything else, jump jets are adaptable if things get rough. Nothing better for exploration. The initiative is about a new beginning, pioneering. With the right gear and the right skills, we'll be ready for anything. Everyone has a role. And most importantly, we've got each other's backs.